Welcome to a special edition of the Referrals Podcast. Introducing our new Daily Dose. We've assembled the ultimate crisis response team for your business. Generous leaders from around the globe teaming up to teach, guide, and lead you through this time of isolation and quarantine. Now, let's meet your host, Michael J. Mayer. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's edition of The Daily Dose. I have to tell you that I am so excited about today's session. Today is stop worrying, start succeeding. And we need to really discover the secret of what matters most in our life. And we have a very special guest today to help us do that. A quick shout out that I have to give. I have to give a quick shout out to Judy Paul. Judy Paul uh, had the following to write about our 30 mornings class. And I just have to, I just have to give her credit for sharing this. And uh, for those of you that don't know, we do have a couple of seats left in 30amfs.com, 30 mornings. Uh, it said, thanks, Michael. I have so much gratitude for the Miracle Morning system in 30 mornings. It changed my life almost five years ago. It began when I ordered Hal Elrod's book and companion journal, along with your book, The Miracle Morning for Real Estate Agents. I had always told myself my whole life that I was not a morning person. That is what I believed to be true. I also believed I could not journal because I could never string together more than five days before giving up. After reading those two books, I took 30 mornings. It has been life-changing. I have created new habits and gotten rid of old ones. It is almost embarrassing to confess my routine prior to 30 mornings. I would hit the snooze multiple times and then lay in bed, check emails before dragging myself out of bed. I now have a policy that email checking happens after 9 a.m., which is after I have done my morning ritual and plan my day by writing it down in my planner. I now write in three different journals every morning. Who would have thought I could have changed lifelong bad habits and created some really great ones? I am not where I want to be yet. Can we all relate to that? But I believe it is possible. I love your teaching on the other rituals as well, the Sunday night ritual, nightly ritual, the go-home ritual. I am still a work in progress on those as well. Thanks again. I appreciate you and am so excited to hear your daily dose today. So that literally was just sent to me about an hour ago. And Judy Paul, I just want to give you a shout out. Thank you. And everybody else, I'll tell you, thank you. I, I have to tell you that Chantel Ray, our guest today, is one of the most awesome people on the planet. I'm just going to, I mean, I don't know if I can do a better intro than, than that right there. But I have to tell you that um, she gave me one of the best compliments I've ever gotten. And Chantel, you probably don't even remember this because, because you give so many great people great compliments. But I spoke for you in the Virginia Beach area, and uh, it, it went really, really well. We had a packed house, and uh, you did a great job of, of promoting and getting the word out. And um, she goes, you know what? We've done this before. We, we've had great turnouts and things like that. And they've liked everybody we've had. But Michael, they loved you. Like they love you. And it was just like, I mean, it was, it was, uh, I know you just said it like in passing, but it was like, it, it just something that, that really hit me in the heart that, um, you know, I think the reason they love me is because I love them. You know, I love my audiences. I love, I, in fact, I love them maybe in some cases even more than they love themselves. But, you know, I just, I see such a bright and amazing potential in people and, and uh, I do love them. And, and I think sometimes that's reciprocated. I'm not there to, to speak and get out. You know, uh, some people call it a shit and run, right? The shit and run speakers who just come in and blah, sell some stuff and then they're gone. You know, I, I, I think that when people give me an ounce of interest, I'm going to give them a ton of love, right? You really so, did. Everyone loved it. You crushed it that day. And you just are doing what God's gifted you to do. And this is what God's gifted you to do. And you're doing an amazing job at it. I'm going to tell everybody right now that we usually hold these to 30 minutes, like never. But today, there's no way this is going to be held to 30 minutes. Do you have more than 30 minutes, Chantel? You have so much. I'm just, I'm just going to give whatever God puts on my heart today. All right. So, you know, right off the bat, first and foremost, is like, give us a little bit of, of your history, how you became an entrepreneur, um, and just kind of, you know, some of, maybe a story about 
uh, what has built you to be who you are, which is a super mom, super realtor, super wife, su you're like a super everything. And, and it's like, uh, we had a couple of people on the, on the strand when I did the promo piece, they were like, how is it even possible what Chantel Ray Finch is doing? Like, is that even possible? Like how, so maybe set the tone and give us a little bit of an introduction to, uh, to yourself. Well, one of the things I say to myself every day is that I give my very best and then some every day. And I'm just not okay with just being an okay mom. I do. I want to be the best mom I possibly can. I want to be an amazing wife. I want to be an amazing friend. And so everything I do, I give my very best and then some. It's, it's just everything I have. And so I think that one of the things that is super important is that it's just about your mindset so much. Like even what we're going through right now with COVID-19, what the exciting part is to start and think about what, what kind of opportunities do you have right now to reinvent and to create a new avenue of revenue mm. that might be virtual, which then opens up a much bigger audience than you ever had before. It opens up a better way of potentially reaching even more people. And so like, you know, it's funny because I have a friend of mine who he, all he does is events kind of like for you, you know, like he goes around and he speaks and he's like, you know what? I'm going to now be able to reach even more people than I was with the events. Cause now I'm, I'm shifting and I'm moving to a more virtual model, which now I'm going to reach more people. And you, we have to be adaptable right now. Mm -hmm. We have to learn how to turn crisis into opportunity. Mm -hmm. And that has to be your mindset. And so it's all about getting yourself into a place of no matter what you're doing, I'm going to get my mindset in the right place. So, and, and I love that, right? Mindset matters. I, I did a, the very opening daily dose. And for those of you that are new, welcome. And for those of you that are new, you might want to go back to the, the, the first one that we did uh, a week ago, Monday. And I did the seven things that matter most. And one of the first things that I talked about is mindset matters. And today, it, it, it really is about mindset. And people were on vacation last week. You know, they were like, oh, it's like spring break. It's like, you know, it's like a snow day times five or, or whatever. You know, this week, reality is sinking in, you know, and, and people are going to stop, start worrying. So let me ask you this. What, how, how, what are some top tips or practical tips if people are like really worried, if they're really worried about, you know, what they're doing, what's going on, finances, uh, their, the illness, the, the virus, you know, what are some top tips? What's a tip to help us stop worrying and start succeeding? Yeah. So one of the things that is adaptability, right? Because you have to say, how does one adapt to the current climate? And what is the best way for us to lead in this time of crisis? And it first starts with what's fake news and what's real, right? Mm -hmm. Like attempting to discern the noise mm -hmm. and and having, okay, this is a bunch of noise and this is the news. And then what is actually what's real that is going on? And I think that I do think there's a lot of stuff that's real, but I do think mm -hmm. the media has really hyped things up mm -hmm. to make things worse than it really is mm -hmm. in some, some cases. And so I just am constantly filling my mind right now. I am closer to God right now than I have been in a while. And mm -hmm. I was already very close to him. And right now I've had more joy in the last two weeks than I've had before and the thing okay, is okay hold on hold on. you got to dive into that right i mean I, I mean it's one of those so you've had more joy in the last two weeks mm -hmm. than in a long time so so what's what's interesting is is here we are worried about surviving and worrying about worry and worry is uh is paralyzing some mm -hmm. people and and here you are you know what's the opposite of worry i would say almost like joy is the opposite of, of worry. So how are you in joy versus, versus worrying? 
So one of the things I've said to myself is that I'm going to be extremely stingy with myself, Mm. meaning I'm not going to be spending money on myself. I'm not going to be taking any money and pouring it back into myself, but I'm going to be extraordinarily generous with other people. Mm. And so, you know, we just gave $10,000 and are giving out groceries to people. And we're just, I'm literally thinking of what can I do right now so that I can be a blessing to other people right now. And so what happens is, is the more that you're able to give, that is how you're able to get the joy that you, it, it, people think in their mind, the more that I get, the more that I consume, that's how I'm going to have joy. Mm -hmm. And ironically, the way that you have joy is by giving back to other people. And so people don't realize that, but that is 100% how it works. Because you can help. You know, what, what's funny is if you want to be happy, help others. Isn't that, isn't that funny? I mean, we always think of the way to be healthy, uh, happy, healthy, <laughs> the way to be happy is when people help us or when people give to us or when we get something. But what we've discovered is the new Corvette doesn't make you happy for very long, right? The new hairdo doesn't make you happy for very long. It's important, but it doesn't make you happy for very long. But what really makes us happy is having value, having meaning, and being able to, to be generous. And, and what you've discovered, and you're already really generous. You know, you, you were generous forever. I remember, I mean, I think we could even talk about that a little bit, is like how we met, you know? And, and the environment of how we, we first met, how it was kind of a precursor to things to come, to, to a lot of this stuff, you know? And, and, and we'll talk about maybe the Howard Brenton and the star power system as we go through here. But it's like, so uh, let's say people don't have $10,000. You know, we, we, we just helped the New York situation with some donations and, and, and promoting what they're doing. New York is really hard hit right now. Yeah, they are. And so, so, and I, I have to be honest with you. I mean, it's, it's one of those where it's like, you kind of help them, but it's like, man, it's, it's like, it, it, it felt so small, you know, it, it felt like such a small contribution compared to uh, what could be done. You know what I mean? And so let's say people don't have, you know, $10,000 or $25,000 to contribute to something like that what, uh, how can they help? Right? Yeah. So one of the things that I think people can do is just pray about it and say like, okay, God, what is it that I can do with whatever I have? How can I be a blessing? And so if you're asking that question genuinely, God will, you know, in a still small voice kind of prompt you with different things. And so, you know, I had an opportunity. One of the things I say is, what can I do today? God, show me who I can be a blessing in. Mm. And that I was at the grocery store and the girl in front of me, it was like, she had a bill of like $42 and she went to run her credit card and the credit card got denied. Mm. And she, as soon as she said that, I said, um, excuse me, ma'am, I would like to pay for her groceries in front of me. And mm. she was like, she, you know, she started crying and she was like, oh my gosh, thank you. Mm. So just whatever God has given you, you know, it, it's about saying, okay, with, with what I have, God, what do you want me to give away? Because the thing about happiness is, is that there is no thing that makes you happy. Nothing. Mm. There is mm. no thing that you can have that can make you happy. And, and it's all about sowing. Like Jesus taught us that it's, it's all about sowing and reaping. You mm-hmm. sow your way into happiness mm-hmm. and that that happiness is an outcome. And so when you say, okay, it, you know, people say, okay, when you give, that's when you're the happiest, but it's so true. And it, mm-hmm. it's counterintuitive to think, okay, because what people are wanting to do right now is hoard right? Mm -hmm. Like I went to go to get toilet paper the other day. I went to Costco and a friend of mine got a toilet paper and someone took it while we were turned and looking at something else. Someone took her toilet paper out (laughs) of her cart. Oh, no way. (laughs) They stole the toilet paper at the store before she had a chance to buy it. Yes. Out of her cart. 
that's that's scary yeah um, so so it, it it is one of those where i have to tell you that we're really hitting on something that's that's more universal and bigger than the coronavirus or COVID-19 is is this like happiness is a product you know it, it it's you know you have your goals and and people have these goals of transaction and volume and sales and revenue and and all that and all those are results goals you know they're the results of something and then you've got activity goals, which is what leads to the revenue, what leads to the sales, what leads to the transactions. And like activity goals are making 20 calls a day or having a listing appointment every week or whatever it may be. Those are activity goals is what are the activities that, and when you focus on the activities, you get the results. But too often people are so locked into the results that they get frustrated and worry that they're not getting the results. Well, they're not getting the results because they're not doing the activities. And what you just hit on is, it. this is about to be mind blowing for a lot of people. Happiness is a results goal. Happy, your happiness is a results goal. Happiness is a byproduct. It's a result of an activity. And the activity is generosity, in my opinion. The activity is helping people. The activity is providing value. And, you know, Chantel, you, you keep hitting it on. I mean, it's like, oh my God, we're 15 minutes in. Maybe we just go 30 minutes because it's going to be so mind blowing for people that, that this is all they can take. Because this is the way, this is the truth, this is the light. Like, this is it. Like, if you had to, what do, what does everybody want? Happiness, joy. What is the activity? It is helping people. It is generosity. And some people are like, well, I don't have $10,000 or $25,000. Well, you know what you can do? You can share this episode of the Daily Dose. You can share the Generosity Generation group. You, you have all these ways to help that are, that are not financial. You know, Chantel didn't start out helping people financially. I, I'm telling you right, you were one of the biggest influences in one of my biggest influences lives. You were a huge influence in Pat Hyben's life. And you know what, Pat Hyben has been a, a, a large influence in my life. And you know, you were doing this way before you were cranking out a hundred transactions a year and that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, I think that the biggest thing is there is a huge connection between happiness and selflessness, mm. okay? It's a huge connection between happiness and selflessness. And Jesus talked about the woman who gave two pennies. So it's not about how much you're giving. It's about your willingness to be selfless right now, to not be in hoard mode, but to just literally just say, God, what do you want me to do to be a blessing in someone else's life right now? And that is where you're going to see so much more joy come into your life. So how, so how can we find joy during this, this craziness? How, 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 how can we do that if it's not like just a donation or paying for somebody's groceries? What are some other ways that we could find joy in all of the, the craziness and chaos, if you will, that's going on? Maybe the first thing is I need to change the word from craziness and chaos, right? Is, is choose, your words are important. You know, words are important. So how can we find joy now? Right. And, and the thing is, first you start with your mindset because your natural inclination is to acquire and to consume and to look your best, right? Like my, my first inclination is in order for me to be happy, I need to acquire and to consume. And so you've got to change your, your mindset to say selflessness leads to happiness. And so I want to think of what can I do even for your family at home? Like, how can I be selfless with my family? So one of the things, you know, I love getting massages. And so I used to get massages at my house all the time. And so instead of having the, the girl, the massage therapist, my son has been giving me foot massages. <laughs> my husband's giving me some, I'm giving them some. And so it's just a matter of saying, you know, what can you do for the people in your family? Yeah. What can you do online to encourage people? How can you call people on the phone and, and encourage their day? But the, the number one thing that you have to do is first fill yourself up 
like for me, I have to fill myself up with God's word Mm. in order to then be able to pour it back out. Because if I'm empty, then I'm not going to be able to be able to pour it back out to anyone else. So spending time, I'm listening to sermons online. I'm spending, I'm listening to positive, you know, things like this online. I'm reading the Bible. I'm memorizing scripture. Mm. He is, is fear. That is what it really boils down to. And my grandmother is 99 years old and she really, she really does not fear. It's, it Mm. really blows my mind, but I called her and I'm like, she lives in New York. My grandmother lives in New York. And I said, let me ask you, are you worried right now? She's like, Mm. no, I'm bored. She's like, I got to get out of this house. I've been in this house for seven days, you know, and, and, she knows that she's like, I'm bored to tears right now. (laughs) But the big thing is, is if you're worried, what you're, you're saying is I am living in fear and what that's what we need to get rid of is the fear. Mm. Yeah. And, and uh, a lot of people talk about different acronyms for the, the word fear. And I believe that I have a different one and a different slant on that, which is fear is an acronym is for everyone, a reality. The truth is, is fear is a reality for everyone. Like everyone has fear. It's what you do with it. You know, you just, you just put it over here for your grandma. She's really like 99% fearless, right? I mean, it's like she's put her fear in a box and put it into a really small corner in the back of her basement. And she's over here in a, in a fearless space. And that's really what we have to do with our fear is just like, all right, what, why am I feeling this? Where am I feeling? Write it down. You put it over here and then you go to work. Right. And it's like, whatever your fear is, write it down, put it over there and go to work, you know? And it, and, and it's one of those where it's like you, you have encapsulated, I think what a lot of people have, uh, have the need to do is they really have to believe in themselves at this point. Do you agree with that? Well, I think, I think the first thing is they have to believe in God because, you know, the, the thing is, is that the, there's a difference between worry and legitimate responsibility. First of all, legitimate responsibility means I have certain obligations and certain, certain duties that I need to do to the best of my ability, but worry goes the next step. And it says, I don't know what the outcome is going to be. You know, we're not saying I'm just going to sit at home. I'm going to eat bonbons, drink coffee, sit on the couch and watch wheel of fortune all day. I love Stonewall Jackson's quote. He says, duty is ours consequences is God's Mm. duty is ours. There are some things I have to do, but at the end of the day, consequences is God's. And, you know, you have to say, okay, it like there's people at home. Like if you're in real estate right now, you know, make phone calls. Don't just sit around and, you know, call on people, check out how they're doing and how can you help them? Is there anything that they need? Mm. And, you know, that's, that would be one is that just keep reminding yourself that consequences are, are God's and you're going to still do your part. But I think the biggest number two thing that you can do is remind yourself that worrying doesn't do any good anyway. Mm -hmm. It really doesn't. If, if worrying could help you, then go ahead and do it. But if it really can't, she's like, my grandmother says, I'm not going to worry about the 99 things that I worried about that never actually came about. Right. You know, right. I, I love this quote by Corey Ten Boom. She says, worrying does not empty tomorrow of its troubles. Mm. It empties today of its strength. Wow. I'm going to say powerful. it again. Yeah. Worry does not empty tomorrow of its trouble. It empties today of its strength. Mm. So you just have to remind yourself that it's not going to make any difference anyway. Mm. That's powerful. That's powerful. You could almost tweak that to be, you know, uh, worry does not end tomorrow's troubles. It ends today's joy. Exactly. You know, so, so don't rob, don't rob today for tomorrow. You know, a lot of people talk about, you know, it's going to be tomorrow. I'm going to do it tomorrow, whatever it may be. But what we need to do is, is, and the other thing about worry is, is a, or one, 
does it matter, right? Does it really matter? And I think one of the things that people are really finding out today is what really matters, like mm -hmm. what really matters. And then the second part is, can you control it? How much control do you have over it? You know, like I used to have this worry about dying early. You know, my dad died at 54 and uh, he died from cancer. And so I always had that thought in the back of my head that, you know, I, I'm, I'm afraid to die early. And you, if you look at it as, all right, does it really matter? Okay, yes, it does matter, right? And then it's like, do you, can, do you have any control over it? Well, that, the answer to that is I have some control, but I don't have a ton of control. And, and then it's like, what evidence do you have to support the worry, right? You have your dad died early, but how many people die early? Not many, very many people die early uh, from cancer or natural causes compared to the people who live. And the second thing is my brother is already older than my dad. My sister is already older than my dad was when he passed away. My other brother is already older than my dad when he passed away. So we have more evidence to support that you're probably going to live longer than your dad did. So freaking relax, right? Yeah. And live. I, I would say the one thing I, I try to remind myself of is that you have to remind yourself that God takes care of the birds. How much more is he going to take care of you and how much more valuable you are in Luke chapter 12? He says, consider the ravens. They don't sow or reap and they don't have a storeroom or a barn, but God feeds them. How much more valuable are you than the birds? And then he says, who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life? Mm -hmm. A single hour. If you worry that if I just said, Oh my gosh, I'm going to worry. I'm going to worry. Like you just said, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to die young. I'm going to die young. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. By you worrying about it, can you add even one single hour to your life? No. Yes. No, I can't. Right. Did you just hit me over the head with some <laughs> Bible verses to actually help me with my problem? <laughs> I mean, kabam, right? Like I've got this. Well, the so, birds, they look at the birds. They don't get all stressed out about life. They're not like, yeah. you know, and sometimes when I think one of the things, my husband, he's been really good and he's got a great attitude, but every once in a while he'll watch the news. See, I don't watch the news because yeah, yeah. I just fills me up with negativity and I don't want that. Mm -hmm. But sometimes he'll come up with something and then I'll joke and I'll kind of make like a bird. And I'm like, I'm going to just be a bird and fly away. I'm like, the birds don't get all stressed out about life. Yeah. Birds just do what they're supposed to do and God meets every need. And, and the truth is God has always met every one of your needs that you mm. really needed. Why is he going to stop now? He's not. Are you enjoying the daily dose? Want to connect with thousands of other business owners that are winning the referral game while working from home right now? Head over to the Generosity Generation Facebook group. Connect with leaders, visionaries, and business owners from all over the world. Go to www.joingengen.com. That's www.joingengen.com. Amen. And it's so funny. That reminds me of a far side. I don't, do you ever remember the far side cartoons? Uh -huh. There used to be a guy, uh, Jim, you know what? In the comments below, who was the one who did the far side? I think it was Jim Larson or John Larson. But anyway, the far side is one of the great, the, the greatest single comic comic I've ever seen. Like there's like a one page, literally it's a student pushing on the door to the Mudvale School of the Gifted. And he's pushing on the door and the door says, pull, right? And it's, and it's like, that is so true, right? It's a school of the gifted, but even gifted people will occasionally like push on a door that says, pull. I mean, come on, how many of you below in the comments have ever pushed on a door that literally says, pull right there? Gary Larson is the guy's name. I, I remember one of his comics was, he had uh, the, this eagle on, uh, in the nest, and the eagle had like a pair of sunglasses on. And it said, birds of prey just know they're cool. You know what I mean? And that's like, that's what I get out of this is, is just like, the, they don't care. 
Like the Eagle doesn't care. The Hawk doesn't care. Like they know they're cool and everything's going to be fine and they're being taken care of and they're not worried. Right. So I'm going to be, you know, if they're going to take care of the birds, God's going to take care of me and, and let's, let's move forward. Right. Yeah. I mean, what is the solution to, to worry? It's faith. Mm-hmm. What is the solution to fear? It's faith. It's, mm-hmm. it's faith saying that, you know, God's not going to sustain me. And, and the thing is, is that whatever God's will is, see, God will never lead you where the grace of God won't sustain you. Mm. Say that again, please. It's God will never lead you where the grace of God won't sustain you. You know, mm. one of the things I used to, I would say is like, I'd visit people in the hospital and they, they would mm. say, maybe they had cancer yeah. and they're going through chemotherapy and they lost all their hair. And I, sometimes I'd leave and I'd go, God, I just don't know if I could handle that. I just don't know. I'd be like, God, I I just want to die in my sleep. Like, don't hook me up to chemotherapy. (laughs) Don't put me in the hospital. Like, can I just like nicely go when I, but, but here's the thing. God doesn't give you cancer grace until what? You've got mm-hmm. cancer. Like mm-hmm. he doesn't give you go broke grace <laughs> until you don't have money. I mean, he's just always there. And mm-hmm. and right, even though right now you're thinking, how am I going to handle it? It's like, God's not going to lead you there. And unless the grace of God's not going to be there for you, God's grace is going to sustain you, whatever it is that we're going to go through. And so you just have to say to yourself, every time you have fear, what's the solution? It's faith. God's mm-hmm. always been there with me before. He's going to be there for me now. So how do you get into the faith, right? So for me, it's taking action, right? So instead of worrying about the things, I'm going to go write or do work or uh, do something, right? I'm going to go play catch with my son, or I'm going to go to the baseball park or whatever it may be. How do we, how do we, I mean, I mean, if we go over here and we're over here and we're like, hey, faith, I'm in faith right now. I'm in faith. Okay, I'll give you a really practical example. I'm back in fear, right? Okay. So I I, I wish my purse was right here. I'd show it to you. But my purse, everyone jokes it. Like if I say, hey, can you hold my purse? It is literally like the heaviest thing because I like (laughs) to have everything with me at all times. So it's like, it's probably about, I don't know, 40 pounds. It's really (laughs) heavy. Yeah. And so you want to visualize either a purse or like think about a backpack Mm -hmm. and you want to think about that when you have worry, it's almost like a backpack that you're holding onto or that purse. And what you have to do is every time is you have to literally like take that backpack off and say, God, I can't carry this. It's just too much for me. I'm worried about it. I want to exchange it for the peace of God. And so Mm -hmm. sometimes it's a game that you just do back and forth where you like lay it down and then you pick it up again, you lay it down and pick it up, lay it down, pick it up. Right. It's like this terrible game you do. But what you do is anytime you feel worried, you just say, you know what, God, right now, I want to exchange my burden for the peace of God that you talk about in Philippians that pass all understanding. I want to trade my heavy purse or my heavy backpack for your peace. And the way that I do it is truly just by I listen to uh, Christian music. And if you go to, I actually have all my favorite songs on ChantelRay.com slash worship. Um, If you go there, you'll, you'll see all of my favorite ones. So the minute I start to get sad or I start to get worried, I literally just play one of those and jam out and, you know, sing. I, I have verses that I have memorized um, that I, that I say, like, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with Thanksgiving, present your request to God. Mm -hmm. Um, I just have those memorized off the top of my head. And so I memorize verses, but. um, And then what, right? So, so I love this chantelray.com slash worship. Is that okay? Uh So for those of you that don't know, she's written a best selling. uh, health book. And she was one of the first practitioners of the internet intermittent fasting craze. That is not just a craze. What they've discovered is that it really works. And it's probably something that everyone should do. And she runs a real estate company that does over 1000 transactions a year. Uh, She was a leader in the foreclosure and REO market space back in 07, 08, 09, 10, and even up till today. And uh, super mom, 
super wife, super leader, and uh, all of the above. And, and so, you know, listen, I, I think we have to go, well, crap, okay, if, if that stuff works for her, then I should probably try it, right? And, and so we're, we're in worry, we've listened to the, the Christian music, then what? Right. Yeah. And so now, yeah. okay, so we've done that, but now yeah. we do, you know, the thing is, is that we have to take action, right? So mm -hmm. we're not doing business as usual. We all need to pivot. And what the exciting thing is, is that we just need to say, okay, let's pray about what are we going to do that's going to to allow us to shift right now? What are some different things that we can do? So for me right now, um, you know, we actually went through all of the things we had on our P&Ls. Like we all kind of right. went through and said, okay, what are we slashing? You yeah. know, Expense all kinds reduction, of things. right? Massive. So conserving resources, right? Let's yes. go look at what is the expense reduction that we can uh, do. And you cancel the YMCA or, or your gym because you can't go. You right. canceled Massage Envy because you can't go. You right. canceled, you know, you canceled a lot of these things that are luxuries and that are not necessarily uh, necessary. I guess that was a double, double usage of necessary there. But, but all right. So, so we've, we've hopefully, and here's the thing, dear, dear God, you know, is I would hope that people who have been listening to the Daily Dose have, are done with that. Like they've gone through their, their phone bill and taken off mobile data because they don't need mobile data because you're not mobile and you're not going to need data out there. You can do, use your internet for the data, right? You didn't get rid of your internet plan, right? Because you you're going to need that, you know? But maybe you've taken the movie channels off your, off your direct TV or whatever it is. You've taken, so hopefully what I would hope is that everybody who's listening to the Daily Dose is done with that, right? They've, they, they better be. And if not, Chantel just gave you the, the 55th reminder that doggone it, you got to go through your credit card statement and your, your bank statements and reduce and cut and eliminate, right? You got to do it and get an insurance review and get a mortgage review and do these things that could save you thousands uh, over the course of the year. And quite honestly, you should have been doing this anyway, but you know what? We needed a reminder and we got it. So now we've done expense reduction. We've done a thorough analysis of the P&L and the budget. What, what, what next, Chantel? Yeah, so and then I'm by the way, doing... real quick before you answer that, is comment below with a question for Chantel Ray. Please ask her question. And what, we've already got a couple, Chantel, that people have asked is one, what's a typical day for her look like? Number two is any advice for helping family members chill the spouse is a firefighter or a doctor or a nurse. So we'll, we'll come back to those. Um, but, you know, so we've done expense reduction. What, what's the, the next side of it or what, what can we do on top of that? So I'm going to be doing a call later today. I've really learned a lot of what the fed, federal government has to offer. And they've made some disaster relief loans available um, to businesses. And if you're in real estate, um, you know, there's lots of things that are going on. And so I'm going to do a full call on that later today on my Facebook. So you could join in on that to learn exactly what you need to do if you are in real estate to take advantage of all those things. So that's one of the things that you can do is figure out what are some things that you can get with that. I would talk to your landlord. Um, did you say that already of kind of seeing nope. if you have a mortgage or um, what kind of payment plan? So you can try to keep as much cash as you can on hand right now and just talking to them about, you know, saying, can we get a reduction right now in our rent? Um, you know, that could be a, a way to kind of help things if you're, if you don't have a mortgage. Um, but I think that, you know, still like for, for us, we can still do real estate transactions. So we are still able to mm -hmm. do all that. And there's some people who are, you know, hiding in a cave and they're like, I'm not leaving the house. Yeah. And there's other people who are just really flourishing during this time. We have last week, I had one guy in, um, in our company who ratified five contracts last week. 
And so again, it's a matter of- Were they seeing homes or without even seeing the homes? um, A lot of them were things that maybe someone had saw before and they just ratified them. Um, We are still able to show homes here. So Mm. we're still, as long as they have one person, we're still able to do that. Mm. So for us, we actually this month have ratified more contracts this month than we did last month. Yeah, wow. That's, yeah. that's, that's, uh, that's amazing. And not necessarily the, the common statement. And so I love that. And uh, I also love the thought on the, you know, looking into forbearances. Uh, we have to be really careful with that. Some people say, yeah, you can take a couple months off, but then you're going to have to pay for those two months as soon as we're back on. Other places will take the couple months off and they'll put it at the very end of your, of your payment system. Uh, so just be really careful when you're checking into those. And I, I think the verdict is still out on what those kind of things could do to your credit. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't have the answer for that, but I have to tell everybody that I'm looking for that answer. I'm searching. I'm, I'm every day. I'm trying to keep my finger on the pulse of, of what's going on with cares, the, the uh, stimulus act and the stimulus program that that's coming out. And uh, also the loan programs that uh, that look like they're coming down the road. Um, so check into Chantel's page later on as well. Uh, she'll be talking about some of the things that they've seen out there. All right. Um, what time is your call today, Eastern? Um, it's going to be at 2.30. 2.30 Eastern? Okay, great. Mm-hmm. And then um, any advice for helping family members chill is the word that was used. And it says, uh, you know, example, I've got a spouse as a firefighter, or there's a spouse who happens to be a doctor or a nurse right now, you know? Yeah. You know, it really is. You know, Mike Tyson uh, has a quote. My husband says it all the time. Are you about to quote Mike Tyson? Wow. Like, (laughs) you know what? You went from (laughs) quoting the Bible to quoting Mike Tyson. This might be the most complete interview I've ever done. (laughs) Because he says it all the time. It's coming up to my head. He he says, everybody has a plan until they're punched in the face. Boom. And right now we're all getting punched in the face, right? Like we all thought we had a plan. We all thought we had a good idea. And so now, you know, once you literally just say, okay, the first time you get punched in the face, it's, it's not pleasant. Right. But (laughs) yes, yes. I remember once, once you're done being punched in the face, you go, okay, so now we're, we've got to pick ourselves up and we have to just say, okay, I'm going to now do the very best I can. And you know, that you're not afraid of getting punched in the face. Like yeah. you, you know that it's a gift because once you get through this, you're going to have so much strength and fortitude mm-hmm. that the next time you have a bad situation that comes around, we know our economy is cyclical. That's right. You know? It's going to come back. It's bound to come around. And mm-hmm. so, you know, everyone else was kind of punched in the face in the twenties and the seventies and the eighties, and yep. they've been punched in the face. And so sometimes some of these people, They've never been punched in the face. Like this is the first, our economy has been so good, right? Yeah. yeah. And so they don't even know. And I think this is going to really be a blessing for some people. I think some people who have been living paycheck to paycheck, they didn't have money in the savings. They haven't done what they needed to do. This is going, this is going to get them to be a lot stronger. And if you Mm. can look at that and say, I know that I'm going to be so much stronger. I know that this is going to be a blessing in the long run, maybe not right right this second, but I know in the long run. And that's why I think I've just had so much joy because what's happened was six months ago, I said to our company, I told them, I told my leadership team, I said, we're going virtual. I prayed about it. God wants to think about that before all this was coming around. You know, yes. you were thinking about going virtual and really honing in this doc-free environment, right? Document-free, paper-free. So we we had already set ourselves up. And now what this is doing for me, this is why I am I'm feel so much joy about for my real estate company, is it's, I had made our plan kind of over the next year, mm-hmm. you know, like we're going to do this and then we're moving to this and then we're moving here to go virtually. Now we are 
have everything set up where we just put it in high gear. And so for me, I just know that's going to be such a blessing for our company. And that's how we're going to be able to grow and scale our company because everything we can literally do everything, every process, every system. When we onboard agents, there's nothing for, like there's nothing for them to do except yeah. do everything online. Like if someone actually came into one of our offices, yeah. we'd hand them a computer and say, fill this out because yeah we're doing everything virtually. So yeah, I know I this that. is going to be a blessing for us. I, I know that I know that I know that I know this is going to be a blessing. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And be a blessing, right? It's going to yes. be a blessing. And the secret is to be a blessing. Be a blessing. And, yeah. and uh, I, it's so funny is I've had this sign on my office door for 20 years. No, it might be. Yeah. 20 years that said, be a blessing. Right. And I tap it when I leave the office, I tap it, be a blessing. And I just, mm -hmm. I tap it. And, uh, you know, and I've lived by it for, for forever. And we've had a lot of people within the generosity generation who, who are now living by it. And they're, they're, what's funny is their, their life's better than before, not just from a, uh, freedom position or a happiness position, but from a financial position as well. So it's, it's been amazing. And I think it's one of those where, um, you know, why don't you, why don't you talk about what is, what does a typical day look like for you? And, and just like in a 30 second snapshot, what that looks like and, um, you know, kind of go through what the typical day looks like now. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so how does it compare to what it was before? Yeah. I want to say one thing before I yeah. answer that. Um, and that is our neighbor, um, had taken chalk art and put on the driveway. She put all these beautiful quotes mm. about, uh, joy and happiness and being grateful and all this stuff. And I was thinking, here's a girl who has no money. She has a box of colored chalk mm -hmm. and she now brightened up and cheered my day. And that's what I'm talking about. You can literally yeah. with nothing yeah. be able to be a blessing to somebody else with just colored chalk and she put all these beautiful sayings all over the driveway to just really bring joy to us that day. I'm going to add that to the action items is those of you that have sidewalk chalk, I want you to, what, what quote, put a quote below that is your happiness quote or your joy quote or your gratitude quote or your appreciation quote, or your generosity quote, or your love quote, put a quote that you love. What's your favorite quote of all time? Put your favorite quote of all time in the comments below. And I'm going to encourage you to write that in sidewalk chalk on your driveway. Or we were doing a parade in our neighborhood, the East Hampton neighborhood, where people were doing art. They did sidewalk chalk art. And then they, they did a parade, right? Everybody did a parade, but they stayed equal distance apart and just checked out. The, but it got people walking, got people outside, gave the kids something to do. I thought it was a great idea. We could do the same thing with quotes, mm -hmm. right? Write an inspirational quote on your driveway or your sidewalk. And could you imagine doing a, a, a parade in the neighborhood? A lot of the people, Chantel, who are with us are realtors who farm or, or you know, really handle the real estate of the neighborhood they live in. This would be just a great suggestion for, for, for those to, to lead your community in this, this inspirational quote parade or quote parade or, or whatever it may be, right? I'll give you two of my favorite quotes. Yeah, I love that. One is gratitude, gratitude turns what we have into enough. Mm. Gratitude, gratitude turns, turns what we have into enough. Mm. It's like, what I'm just going to be grateful for whatever God's given me right at this moment, yeah. what he's yeah. given me now. I am so grateful. Thank you, Lord. And do you know, every time we get a new contract, you know what we've done every time we stop and we just pray and we say, thank you, God. How do we have more contracts this month than we did the month before? Because we have been trying to bless other people as much That's as right. we can. And the minute we get anything, the minute we set an appointment, we told our inside sales team, you stop and you take a moment and you say, thank you, God, mm -hmm. for giving us that appointment. Mm -hmm. I, I love that. That's beautiful. You know, uh, 
I've said this a lot over the years, and it's amazing that 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 really now is just this this time that it's like, it it's it's time, right? It's it, it's time to take our insatiable appetite for what we don't have, and we need to replace it with this insatiable appreciation for what we do have, mm -hmm. and and just this insatiable appreciation, like be appreciative all the time, like walk in appreciate, just be appreciative. What you're saying right there is, is that, you know, you have, you have turned this insatiable appetite for what you don't have into an insatiable appreciation for, for what you do have and what you are being blessed with and, and what is coming to you and, and, and that kind of thing. I, I, I'll tell you, it's just, uh, it's golden. This interview is golden. Somebody needs to hear what we talked about today. And I'm going to encourage everyone that is a member of the generosity generation to, to share this message today. This is not real estate related. This is not business related. Like this is like mindset. This is everyone. This is everyone who uh, I think everyone could hear this message today and everyone needs to hear this message today. And, uh, Chantel, I just want to say thank you so much for, for coming on the Daily Dose. This has truly been a dose of positivity and productivity, one of the best, and, uh, and I love it, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, you know, people are actually praying for favor for you, you know? They're praying over you right now, and they're praying for you, and they're praying with you, and, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it, it's, uh, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a beautiful moment in the uh, short tenure of the daily dose dose and, uh, you provided it, you made it happen. So very much. Well, fun. and I want to say, I feel like, um, you are very selfless and that is just one of the things I love about you. And, and here's the thing, selfishness, nobody has to learn how to become selfish. Like we're all born selfish, right? Mm -hmm. Self selfishness comes naturally. Right. Mm -hmm. But, but if you want to be happy, you have to find a way to give yourself away. Mm. You, that's how you'll be able to be the best possible version of yourself is to just give yourself away and not to worry about like, you know, what I, you know, I'm not going to worry about like this happens, this happens, this happens. I'm going to just give because I know God is going to provide, you know, I personally, I now give 90% of my income away and I live on 10%. And right now I'm giving even more. And the, the reason that I tell you this, I didn't tell anyone this for over 20 years, but the reason is, is because God has shown me time and time and time again, that the more you give, the more he'll give back. It's, mm. it's just how he is. It's, it, there's a verse in the Bible that says, test me in this. God is the time that God says, test me. Mm -hmm. And so if someone's like, gosh, you know, I don't know if whatever you have, even if it's a dollar or $2 or whatever it is, I suggest that you find ways to give yourself away, to give, give money away, to be able to just be a blessing to someone else during mm -hmm. this time. Wow. Wow. I, I have to tell you what, what a great way to put an exclamation point at the end of this message. And uh, Chantel, I'm just, I'm so appreciative of you. I want to put that as an action. I'm for everybody, everybody in the comments below, what is one way that you are going to be a blessing? What is one way that you are going to reach out and help someone? Let's brainstorm. Let's, let's really mastermind in the comments below on where are we going to give, how are we going to give, and what are the ways that we can really spread joy and be a blessing. That is your action item for today. And I have some announcements to make as well. But before I do that, Chantel, I just want to say thank you so much from the entire Generosity Generation and, and myself for being on the Daily Dose. And you have truly been a Daily Dose of productivity and positivity today. Thank you. Well, thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. Everybody, I, I just want to, everybody to know, hey, listen, a few announcements. One, we still have a couple of spots left in 30 mornings that starts Monday. Next Monday, April 6th, 30ams.com. Remember, 
We're doing that at a, a greatly reduced, uh, it's not free because we want you to show up and we want you to be committed. Uh, we are donating our portion from Referco's Avenue, uh, but I want you to know that you gotta check that out. It says West Coast or East Coast. We didn't, we didn't forget about you, Mountain Area and Midwest. Just sign up for one of those two, whatever time fits the best for you. The other thing too is we are teaching a time management class next Thursday at 2.30 by demand. You all demanded that Neil Smith teach time management. We're gonna have that next week at 2.30. Uh, we are going to have a basics of Zoom class with Tara Carter, who is going to get a lot of you started on actually running your own meetings and running your own one-on-ones through Zoom. Uh, we also have a class coming down the road with Sandy Creston on grading your database and how important that is right now. So a lot of things going on right now. You don't have to sign up for any of it. You don't have to sign up for all of it. But I know a lot of you can be overwhelmed with a lot of the, the information that's coming to you. But what I'm hoping is you realize that we're really teaching like by demand. You need it, we'll, we'll go teach it, we'll help, it, help you make it happen. And this is one of the greatest opportunities that you'll ever have to get better and to make a tweak. Don't try to do an overhaul. Now is the time for a one degree tweak. And as Chantel said today, I have to tell you that, you know, she, every day she wakes up, I'm gonna give my best and then some. She definitely sounds like she'd be a great member of the 110% club, right? We give 110% every day. We give our best and then some, every opportunity that we have. Super mom, super wife, super producer, super team leader, the, the whole nine yard. The truth is you can have it all if you give it all. And that is our last message today is be a blessing. How are you going to bless others today? Through a phone call, through a message, through a chalk message on your driveway or on a sidewalk. Ladies and gentlemen, we can all give, we can all help, and we're gonna get through this. It is time to take our insati insatiable appetite for what we don't have and replace it with an insatiable appreciation for what we have, because we have enough, we are enough. And ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate all of you. Thank you for tuning in to The Daily Dose today. And I hope that you all check out Chantel's message later on today about how to have another avenue for revenue in today's world. Thanks, everybody.